okay good so you should see you know a set of slides coming up on the slides now what to call is bi version okay so you know the full slide up here you know essentially talks about the architecture in general you know which means how is the complete cognos you know assembled or put together so if you look at the components here this is the framework manager you know, which essentially is what we have done in bio called our universe so it's similar you know framework rules same concepts so that's a framework now a framework can internally you know have multiple connections and therefore speak with multiple kind of databases or data sources your relational files are the most common ones even odbc and then again depending on the licenses you know sometimes there are some specific cube related tools you know uh, for example mdx is a proprietary format which stands for multi dimensional queries so those cubes kind of things can also be accessed if we have the access so on the lowest layer this is the data on top of that you have a framework you know which creates those rules or metadata presentation layer then on top of framework you have all these tools you know these are tools which cognos provides to us a cognos connection uh, in is something like an info view so you know like we couldn't have that info view working on the build it's nothing but a simple uh, internet portal you know within a company so it's like a web page a user logs in there and he can see reports you know run reports and that's all so that's cognos connection then you have query studio report studio and uh, and yes oh no sorry yeah these two query and the report studio first of all if you talk about the query studio you know this is a tool that will allow you know the users ad hoc reporting so if you remember something like a like a uh, web interface rich intelligent or web being short in, in business subject query studio is almost similar to that you know there a business user can create his own ad hoc query see the results on day to day basis a report studio is like your desk in the business objects so it's a professional report writing tool where based upon some set of you know requirements you will be able to create reports then there is an analysis studio and the event studio where the analysis studio you know would help you probably you know, catch some events or some triggers and event studio you know was one of the latest feature with some licenses where they say you can you know, probably create some triggers or anything so essentially our complete thing is going to revolve around the framework which is the complete modeling part then we'll talk about the query studio the connections and the report studio and you know i think if the ls stuff can work out for us you know some demo samples we can also pick up that at the end so that's our architecture okay uh, moving further when you talk about the framework manager next you know now let's see what is framework manager all about so as you understand i think you can easily relate it to bio so not much big deal to understand so essentially it's the interface that would again help the modelers and also the end business users or you know you or i as a user of a report creation so we have this framework manager here in between which i would call as a business presentation layer so on one side you access the database and the other side you create a structure you know which keeps it simple for the business user so this you know is the main part that we would help it you know uh, hide the complexity so that's exactly what the business objects used to do when you created classes to the left hand side so that's the whole point so you know once you create a framework manager stuff you know you save that framework or you can also export it and then on top of that you can start creating reports so oh, you know one more thing this complete you know uh, tool set like the framework manager or the query studio they all are actually internet explorer based tools so like in business objects you still had a desk key which was on a proper desktop kind of thing these only need an explorer to load and run so that's another you know portability feature okay this is your connection now connection as i said you know in other words this is a portal interface or a kind of web application where users can actually log on depending on the rights they could you know create you want to mute okay so using this they could actually create ad hoc reports they could do administration they could even edit reports so these are the, you know some uh, commonly used tasks of why a portal is required if you have some public reports so you know report like you or i publish for others to see so they are open to the public you can go and check that we can edit the reports
if you have the analysis you know that studio and you have some reports you can do analysis on top of them we can then create and manage events you know, example uh, run this report daily at this particular time so that's a kind of scheduled event okay uh, this part you know we might not be really able to you know uh, speak much but still the introduction is portraits you know is uh, if you are let's say you no know, cognitive developer i wouldn't say though it's your job essentially you know what happens when you go to companies and you log on to their cognitive connection you might see the kind of page you know is different for example you know you'll have a background logo morgan stanley the login pages are changed the color themes are changed so all that is done you know in dotnet and i think jsp or java so that is called a portlet so portlet is nothing but some html and jsp code together which can actually help beautify the page and probably change the themes and structure so that's a portlet so it's more about you know i think a touching or beautification but not to do with the development of core cognos so this all can be done on the on the connection side okay then you got a report studio which is a web based again you know professional report writing tool that could you know help you actually do a lot of range of activities you know in the reporting world so you could report you could distribute it to the users sometimes you know you also have these multi language packs so you could create reports so if you look at this snapshot here you know you would be able to you know kind of recollect or maybe closely associated with the bio stuff so the left hand side again you have the same class object you know here you could drag it so there is a different page structure though but you know you can create such a structure and when you run it you see a report so that's your report studio and yes you know this is the symbol for report studio so that's how you know they create the short symbol okay Query Studio. Um, you know, I think when you get to it, we'll start looking at it. But again, uh, ad hoc reporting tool, good for business users who know their data, and you know, who also have obviously a bit of technical knowledge, so they could create their own reports, even reuse it, save it for themselves. So you know, that's where the concept of a public or private report might come to picture. If they share with the other world, it becomes public. Okay, almost the similar in terms of interface. You know, just that uh, the options will be a bit less. But I think you know we as uh, as users might not be able to see much of a difference there. So that's your uh, query studio. Okay. And yes, and that's the symbol you know with which uh, they denote a query studio. This one. Okay. Even studio. Uh, next one. Yeah. Uh, introduction stuff. So essentially, you know, this could be kind of trigger, you know, where, for example, you have some business which needs a uh, time to time change. Example, inventory. You're running out of a product. You know, uh, even should be triggered. It tells you your, you know, your inventory is low. So all these things can be done here using you know, notifications or events, as they call it. So they can be sent based on business rules that define, you know, what needs attention. So we are in a connection right now, which you could call a small, you know, whatever portal. You see all these links here. You know, let's just have a look on what is you know the structure like. So this public folders, where you know when you will create reports and you publish with for the other world, they can see it here. Your own private stuff can be put in the under the my folders option. Let's see if something is in here. Mm. It's opening. You know, while this opens, you also have a look on the top right top corner. You have this event studio, query, analysis, and report. So that's where you know we are gonna open up and start reporting on. Once yes, you know we have a framework in place. Okay, same problem. That's fine. Okay, what else? So I think okay. Let's have a look on you know the tools in general. So if we look at the event studio. Ah, that's. Let me check is query report studio opening or not. Okay, this is opening up. And then probably you don't have the license for I think the event stuff. Let's just confirm the query studio. Okay, we have it. Hey, you know, we shall one more thing. You know, what you create as a universe in business objects. Here we call it as a package in the framework manager. So you know when you see that package word, it's nothing but a framework manager exported output. Okay, even the analysis studio is working. I think it's only a problem with the event. 
Ah, great. Okay, so now when this is working, good. Okay. Uh, see on the architecture side, you know, so the two uh, roles to cognize. One is the development, you know, which we talk about. For the administration, you know, there's only one interface, which we call as Cognos configuration, the one that you see right now. So in turn, you know, uh, there could be a lot of things that you could do in the Cognos configuration. For example, security, encryption, and blah, blah. This build, you know, has the most simplest of configuration. So we just try and look at how they have done it. Um, okay. So you start from, you know, the root. So you know like business weeks in our informatics that we have spoken about till now you know that the repository or the you know the core content for both these tools are actually saved into a database you know that's what we call an informatic repository for business objects there's similar repository database on sql server similarly for this cognos also you need a repository you know it needs a database like obi does or like owb does so here if you go to the yeah the data access layer so data access is where you have first of all something called content manager so all your content is stored into CM or content manager and within that you have a content store so this content store can be compared to a repository internally in architecture so this is you know a SQL server or user ID password whatever they have and this is the database name so when you actually log into your SQL server you'll see this database so this is where all corners internal information is stored using security encryption users and even your reports so once you create a content store, you know, uh, again, uh, you could, I think, probably you know, restore a lot of different databases. SQL is just one of them. If you want to, for example, tomorrow change something on the content store, just right click. You have to say delete and then add new content store. But, you know, do not do so. You know, It's like sometimes just doesn't come back. I mean, it doesn't work for some reason. Okay. Notification, as I understand, is probably for uh, some reports or some emails to be sent. So you have a SD, you know, this mail server account, like reports available, failed, so on. Okay, uh, this is Cognos Planning is another tool. So you know, as I said, Cognos has multiple tools. There's another tool available called Cognos Planning. I'm not sure what does it really do, but if you have it, you can also you know integrate it here. Okay, if you have application firewall, well. You could create rules here. This is the cryptography option. So as I said, you know, most of the options would not be available here. You know, these are defaults. Otherwise, for you know, in different companies, you might see an administrator changing these for more uh, security. Okay. On the authentication, we rely on the Cognos inbuilt authentication. So that's what here it is. Um, okay, portal services. Right. Now this is the portal that you were seeing. You know, uh, the Cognos connection. Expand it. So that's your portal. Okay, this is the main service. So once you know have done all the below required. So as I said, everything is not required. Like portal service, source control systems not required. What you require here to make at least a Cognos start is content store, and I think this portal service. The two or three. I'll just let you know. So uh, environment. Cognos 8, yep. So in the Cognos 8 service, you know, these are the default ports and some you know settings that you have. So once you change the below things, you know, you can start. Okay. So as I said, there are a couple of things to configure. So one is the content store, and the second is you know this we shall have to see. For example, you have to configure what you know uh, is the local address or the gateway URI. You know what is the so these are defaults. This is the main that you see here, gateway URI. So, for example, as you see, it's called uh, Cognos.cgi. So, CGI is an IS web server extension. So, this Cognos is using IS, which is Windows inbuilt. Some people also use Tomcat, Apache, you know. So, like, therefore, things might get more complex. So, this is a, a general, uh, you know, your introduction to the um, administration. So, while I've spoken about IS, I'll just give you one more, you know, uh, information here. So assuming that you were you know, setting up this, you know, for a company with minimal setup, you know, I don't know the advanced stuff, but with minimal, what you do is, first thing you require is a database, you know, any SQL, Oracle. Second, you require a web server. So here, you know, since they are using IIS, so it is pretty easy. I've done it once or twice. So when you go to Mr. Tools, see here it is, IIS installed. Now when you open up, you know, I'll be able to show you 
where is you know this so you know when you actually go to the